very much for uh, inviting me to speak today. So the title of my talk, try and make it uh, controversial if you like, is Dilemma, ECMO or No ECMO, and how does ECHO guide your decision making? I've got no conflicts. So I work in one of the five transplant centres in the UK, uh, not as big as some of obviously the uh, colleagues in the audience, but we do do uh, a mixture of VADs, transplants, we're a respiratory ECMO, and we've also started an ECMO CPR service in the last year. So I want to start by asking a few clinical questions. Elective surgery, what about planned ECMO in the high risk, or do you just see how you get on and if things don't look good afterwards in the intensive care, salvage ECMO? More importantly, can we predict good or bad outcomes from ECMO based upon our ECHO studies? And then can we learn anything from our specialist circumstances, so our transplants, our VADs and our ECMO CPR, which we can then carry into our normal cardiac practice? So one of my colleagues presented our post-cardiotomy data at the Berlin meeting. So we looked at our post-elective cardiac surgical patients and those ones which needed uh, to have uh, ECMO post-operatively. So we excluded all our transplant patients uh, or our heart failure patients. So we looked at 28 patients which we had data for follow-up for two years uh, and it was a 50% survival. So 50% of your patients do not live for two years. You could argue, does that mean we get it right half the time? So I want to present three clinical cases and just talk about some of the aspects of ECHO for these and how it makes your decisions. And then some learning points, is there anything in the literature to help us? So the first thing which we all look at in terms of uh, ECHO for ECMO is your cannula position and your flow. Um, and we use ECHO to help guide the cannulations itself. We want to rule out distension of the left ventricle, the right ventricle, and if we see distension, echo obviously helps plan what we're going to do next. We clearly want to see the aortic valve opening when we're on ECMO and ejection, and if we don't see that, then we have to come up with a plan of what to do. Very useful for collections and thrombus, and it's important for weaning decisions. Where are we going? Putting someone in ECMO is not a treatment. We would clearly need to plan our future care of the patient. So these are just some, uh, some echo pictures where, uh, which has helped us in our ECMO. So the first one is the cannulation by the groin. So we use it to, uh, to confidence with the, with the uh, guide wire and then the dilatations and seeing the ECMO pipe in the hepatic IVC. So we see a complication of an LV thrombus, and then the bottom right is a patient who clearly had flow problems on the intensive care. You do a TOE, and that tells you the problem of tamponade. So very useful as well for our respiratory ECMO. So we have different cannulas which we, which we can place for ECMO. Uh, so the top picture, the top left, is uh, an Avalon picture. So this is a dual lumen, which is inserted in the internal jugular vein uh, into the IVC. So we actually use the echo to guide the position of the cannula. We want to see the flow across the tricuspid valve, and the echo can, uh, can guide us in terms of small positions of the cannula. Or we can, and, and then the top right, which you're seeing on your screen, is looking at the distal end, the venous. So we want to see the drainage in the uh, IVC or we can go for a two-stage procedure. The picture on your right, was uh, this was an echo which we performed on our intensive care unit when one of the patients was hypoxic, and it's actually shown us that the cannula has slipped position, so the cannula is now in the right atrium, and this necessitated recannulation of the patient. So ECMO CPR, so this is a new service for us. This is a uh, young patient who was brought in by cardiac arrest, we got spontaneous echo output back, but it was repeated VF. So cannulated at the bedside using femoral femoral cannulation. And this is the TOE whilst intermittently going into AF. So as you can see from here, it looks a fairly appalling ventricle. Really only the inferior wall is moving. You might appreciate the spontaneous echo contrast in the LA and the LV, and the aortic valve is not opening much. The important thing about echo, it doesn't tell you what's going to happen in the future. It's only telling you what's going on now. So this patient